Good morning, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much for uh, coming to this uh, beginner-friendly session where we are going to talk about uh, strong typing and, in particular, about uh, strongly typed uh, containers. So let me introduce myself before we get uh, into the details. My name is Sándor Dargo. I work for uh, Amadeus. So I work for the travel industry, mostly with, uh, mostly with C++ for the last uh, nine years. In my free time, I, uh, well, I spend most of my free time writing or, uh, or reading. I write mostly about uh, C++, software development, and, uh, and the books I read, actually. So feel free to, to check out. Used to like uh, to travel a lot with my family. Obviously, it's not really the case anymore. But with some of you, I already had some good discussions about tips and hints, uh, what to do in the in, around the Arctic Circle, for example, in case we one day we manage to get there. And well, I mentioned their uh, home baking, sourdough baking. I have to tell you, I started it before the pandemic, so it's not because we were <laughs> locked up uh, in uh, at, at at home. Uh, well, there are two two kids waiting uh, for me at home, but that's more than enough about myself. So let's have a look at the agenda. We are going to talk first about what is strong typing in in general, and then what problem does it uh, does it solve? How would we use a strongly typed container, and uh, how could we implement one? And then we'll also see if uh, there are any open source solutions uh, available. Well, obviously there are. And uh, I, I checked uh, four of them, let's say four and a half. And uh, three, of, uh, three authors of the four solutions are here at the conference. So in case you find those interesting and uh, you want to get some more information, I'm sure that uh, they'll be happy to, to discuss about it. And uh, then at the end, we will see what, what shall we do with all this. Should we go with our own solutions? Should we go with uh, open source solutions? Uh, obviously, it, uh, it depends. It depends on your situation. But we'll discuss more about it later. Does it sound good for you, this agenda? And in case if you have uh, any questions or remarks during the talk, feel free to, to raise your hand and uh, interrupt me. So. I want to share a bit about the the motivation, my motivation of uh, for this talk. And the thing is that I find that while we speak more and more about strongly typed containers, it's more in the mainstream. You go to any conference and you will find people speaking about uh, strong typing. But uh, there are still only, well, at least that's my experience in, in my uh, my company, still. A uh, few, only few people know about uh, about this concept, and uh, well, I want to to spread the word, and I want to avoid some having some misconceptions about uh, about strong typing, and especially about strongly typed containers, and uh, well, I want to encourage you to to use them, and not only in uh, in code exercises where. Uh, is, where, uh, for example, it's mentioned, OK, you cannot use uh, primitive types, although, OK, a std vector is not a primitive type, but uh, you might consider it one because, well, it's just coming from the standard library. So what is strong typing? It's uh, a very nice technique to make your API safer. We are going to see a few examples how it makes and why it makes it uh, it's safer. It will be harder to misuse. And uh, if you attended, uh, I think, C uh, CPP on C last year, uh, probably it was last year in the online uh, edition that uh, Matt Godbot had a talk about uh, how to write uh, APIs that are hard to misuse. That's, uh, that's a very important uh, topic. And uh, we'll see how we can add specific meaning to to our types through through the names. And well, you will see that this vastly increase the, the readability of uh, of your code. 
but let's see. Let's see an example. What's the problem here? I used to, well, I spent almost the last four years working on a car reservation system. So probably that's why I will bring a couple of uh, car-related uh, examples. What's, what's the problem with this constructor? What do you think? Anyone? Don't be shy. Exactly. That's, that's one of the issues. You can very easily swap the arguments. And, uh, well, maybe I did swap the arguments in, in one of the, the following examples. So you have a look at this instantiation. And, uh, well, one thing is that you, you might swap the arguments, but you look at it and you have absolutely no idea what, uh, what they mean. Maybe, maybe the 96 is kind of evident. Still, you don't know if it's a horsepower or kilowatt. But, for example, if you have a look at 4, it could be the, the number of uh, gears in the gearbox, well, for an old car, quite old car. But it could be also the performance, because in France there is the concept of, uh, well, kind of the, they, they, they measure performance from, uh, from a tax point of view, and there's these uh, categories like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it could be just that, it could be a performance, and then false or true, <laughs> absolutely no, Absolutely no idea. We, we don't know what, uh, what this means. So what can we do here to, to improve the situation? Well, we could use good names. But, uh, well, does it, does it really help? In some situations, with, uh, let's say, when, when you have these uh, compile time values, like, for example, unit tests, it does help. It might help. But um, you, you can still swap. You can still swap uh, the, the, the arguments that you want to pass. So, for example, if, if you have a look at there, is electric, is automatic, uh, well, it's not in the same order. I, uh, I accidentally <laughs> swapped them while I was writing the example. And then I decided that, uh, well, I will just leave it like that because uh, it, uh, it really shows what the, what the problem is with, uh, with, uh, with such uh, interfaces. So in some situations, it, it helps. It's better than it was, but it's still not, uh, not ideal. So strong typing uh, will, will help us in, uh, in such situations. Here you see that we don't use these primitive uh, types anymore. We don't use, uh, what did I use? I think I only used integers and booleans. But now we have. Uh, horsepower type, uh, doors number, and uh, we also have transmission and fuel. And, uh, well, you might create some strong types, you might create some, some enums there, uh, which are, let's say, also kind of strong types. And then uh, it will become much easier, much more readable to, to, to read such a, such a constructor call, for example. But of course, it doesn't only apply for constructors. You can use this, uh, this anywhere. So here we, you, you, you can't really swap these anymore because it would just, uh, it wouldn't compile. So that's uh, about uh, strong typing in, uh, in general. Here we have uh, no, more, uh, no more misunderstanding what uh, value means, uh, means what. Uh, we have a much more uh, readable API. So let's look at a very simplistic implementation. It's very simplistic, but it's often uh, good enough. It's often good enough to, to get started with this. So if you have a look at uh, horsepower, we just uh, have, uh, have a constructor that takes, uh, takes an un unsigned integer. Of course, we could uh, debate whether we should use unsigned or signed. Or, uh, Talks dedicated to to this, and we only have uh, here we only have a getter to to get back uh, the the value if you have to really operate on on that one. So all what we did here is just encapsulating a primitive value, and this already helps us without uh, any further uh, any further uh, features because uh, because uh, well. We know exactly what we pass in. We cannot uh, swap with uh, with anything else, and it uh, carries a carries a meaning. 
to its uh, name. But we could, we could uh, extend this. We could add some uh, some business logic to it. We could move some logic into into such uh, types. We could uh, validate uh, whether a value is good. We could uh, move some some error handling there. But that's not going to be the focus of uh, of this presentation. But uh, if you apply uh, strong typing techniques, uh, you you already move forward uh, a good uh, domain model, which uh, I find that is often missing from uh, from uh, these business applications that uh, that we work on. So you might say that I don't like that get, and uh, and this is an anti-pattern. What uh, the uh, core guidelines advocates against because it says that well. Uh, you shouldn't use trivial setters and getters. And in that case, you just just uh, you can just go uh, with a uh, with a public uh, public member. But it's not really the case here because well, we don't have a public setter. We just uh, have have the constructor. And uh, in fact, in this case, it's uh, only really the name and uh, and the type itself that uh, that brings uh, brings the value. And this is just a way to keep it uh, stupid simple. And it's probably fine in uh, in the beginning, but as I mentioned, we can uh, we could move forward and handle some some class invariants here, and uh, we could we could extend uh, extend the class if we wanted to. So, how would we translate this to to containers? Let's say that uh, we have a simple struct for uh, for a player only has a name, I don't care about uh, the rest, and uh, well, there we have a vector of players. Now you might think that I wrote this uh, slide years ago. No, I just don't uh, follow that much, and I think that these names are still uh, <laughs> uh, easy to recognize. So, on the right side, uh, okay, we see that we have a squad, but we don't know yet how to, how to implement that squad. And then we will see instead of a uh, vector of players, we just uh, want to use that squad, and I w we want to pass uh, these players the the very same way, or at least as as close as possible. Now let's see how would the call side change and why this is uh, important. So on the left side, you see this function register squad, which uh, takes a vector of players and uh, according to the parameter name, it's supposed to be a football squad, but uh, we pass in basketball players. Well, maybe they play football, play soccer well, but uh, that's that's not what we want, and that's not what we want to accept. We want we don't want to accept basketball players there. We really want football players. So, in order to avoid uh, registering just any kind of squad, we will take a football squad with the strongly typed version. And uh, there we can ensure that, uh, well, we wouldn't be able to pass in just any kind of, uh, any kind of players. That's uh, one of the ideas uh, behind. So let's see why this is useful. Why is it better to have uh, a register squad with a football squad instead of having a register squad with uh, just a vector of players? So one thing is that uh, it makes our expectations much uh, clearer. We know exactly what kind of uh, players we expect because, well, okay, we could actually use good variable names, but uh, here, for example, just in order to fit this slide, and uh, if you try to fit a smaller window, you might uh, do the same, well, I just uh, shortened the, the parameter name instead of a football squad, I just put their squad. And uh, maybe I think that, well, it should be evident for the readers. But, uh, well, in any case, I don't have to use good variable names. I could, but I don't have to. But uh, if I use, uh, the, well, if I use strong types, I must use the good type names. I, I cannot uh, shorten those. Well, I mean, I can. Uh, rename the whole class, but uh, hopefully someone will complain in a code review that, hey, Shandor, you are not supposed to do that. Uh, it loses its, its, uh, its meaning. There's a, more, there's a better chance to, to catch it there than just with one, uh, one function. 
So we also have, uh, as, as, as we saw, we have uh, fewer opportunities like this to misuse the API because you can't use uh, the, well, I put here wrong type, you can't uh, use the wrong kind of uh, players. And also if you have, uh, um, as we saw in the constructor, if we have uh, multiple uh, similar parameters, like uh, multiple numbers, multiple booleans, uh, we cannot just mix up the arguments because everything has its own type. They must come in, uh, in order. And uh, if we wanted to, we could move these contractual checks into the, directly into the types and uh, with that we can define what is valid, what is uh, invalid, uh, what is an invalid value for, uh, for, uh, for a strong type. We could uh, even centralize uh, some, some of the error handling uh, into these strong types if, uh, if that's the direction we, we want to take. So let's see how to implement all this. I'm going to show you four different options and uh, we'll see the advantages and disadvantages for, uh, for each of those. So the first option is, which let's say just half of an option, uh, that we can use an alias. I say it's half an, of an option because, uh, well, it's not going to give us a real strong type, but it's already a cheap uh, step forward towards a uh, more uh, readable code base in some situations. So it's, it's very easy, we can use uh, using or we could use uh, type def, but uh, I go with using because it's, uh, well, it's much more uh, readable, I think. We, we say that, uh, well, we have this quad, uh, which is just a vector of players, and uh, that's, you, you cannot imagine something more simple. And you have, uh, obviously, it's, it's just an alias to the, to the vector, you have the full interface available for you, and uh, the code becomes more readable because now instead of a uh, vector of players, you you communicate with uh, with a better name. But it's not strong because uh, wherever you expect a squad, you can still uh, pass in just uh, just a vector of uh, players. So. This. You, you, you don't have to use um, the type name squad there. We didn't create a new type because it's just an alias, but it's uh, still a more readable type name. And in some situations, maybe that's uh, the, only thing, uh, the, the only thing you want or the only thing you have time for because it's, uh, well, it's uh, also something uh, important to, to consider in many cases that uh, you just uh, want to make uh, your code a bit better from, say, from one user story to, to another. And that's, uh, that's a first uh, step, even though it doesn't increase the safety. It increases the readability. But they have a problem that uh, aliases, they, they cannot be forward declared. So you cannot say that, uh, well, for example, you you want to make the first step towards a better domain model and uh, you create your uh, uh, your squad alias and you put it in its uh, own file because you think it's going to be uh, just the first step. And then you want to forward declare in, uh, in another header. It, it doesn't work, it doesn't, uh, doesn't compile. That's, uh, that's quite sad and uh, I, I mean, uh, I face this uh, situation now in my current project that I joined a few months ago that uh, there are these aliases everywhere and uh, often they are even not, uh, not, not public, they are uh, protected or private to a class and they have a bunch of friends everywhere and, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you say, okay, I try to make this better. So I uh, extract this to, to here, I put it there. So now I want to, I want to use it in a, in a different, uh, different class, in a different file. What do I do? Do I, uh, do I just use the underlying type, but then we, we, we lose kind of the, the meaning of all this? Or uh, will I include uh, certain headers just uh, everywhere? And uh, well, I haven't come up with, uh, with a good answer to, <laughs> to this problem. Well, 
I would say the good answer is probably not uh, overuse this uh, this uh, aliasing. Probably that's uh, that uh, would be the the best. So, is aliasing a good idea? Well, it's very easy to to use. That's uh, it's not bad. It already increases the readability and. Uh, it's good, but it doesn't give you the extra protection that we were looking for in the, in the beginning uh, because it's uh, it's not a strong typing. But uh, yeah, and and uh, as I mentioned, it cannot be forward declared. So probably that's something you can use as a first step uh, to make your code uh, a bit readable. But I wouldn't go with this for a long term uh, solution. Now let's see. Could we inherit from from the STL, and uh, if you were here the first uh, day at the keynote of Hana, you obviously know that yeah, of course we we can. She even said that hmm, in uh, some situations it's uh, it's not even a not even a bad uh, idea. Well, I don't really want to to argue that, but uh, uh, at least. Uh, say in, in, in my job I wouldn't dare to do that but uh, I'll I'm going to explain why so should we publicly inherit from an STL type that's uh, that's the question here because you see it's very easy and uh, just like uh, for the alias well it's uh, almost as easy to implement you get the whole interface you don't really have to do any extra uh, typing, and here typing, I mean typing on the keyboard, not uh, about the, <laughs> the, the C++ type system. And your code becomes, uh, I think, much more readable because of the vector, instead of the vector of the players, we already have the squad, and uh, it's, it's very easy to, to work with it. But is it dangerous? Is it dangerous to, to inherit from the standard library? What do you think? Would you do this? Why wouldn't you do this? I see that you don't want to do it. <laughs> you just don't say why. So yeah, uh, the standard library types, they, they don't have a virtual destructor. And because of this, uh, publicly inheriting from one of those types, well, it might lead to, to undefined behavior. But uh, as we discussed on, uh, on Tuesday, the first day of the, the conference, uh, possibility is not certainty. So if we check some coding guidelines, uh, like the, the third one, it says that, OK, do not delete a polymorphic object without a virtual destructor. Deleting an object through a pointer to a type without a virtual destructor results in undefined behavior. Well, just don't do that. <laughs> just don't do that, and uh, then you don't have uh, any issues. So when you look around uh, on the internet, you will find some very heated discussions on, uh, on this uh, topic. And uh, often people say, well, if you know what you, what you do, there is no problem. The thing is that uh, you, you can't always uh, rely on that because uh, as uh, we saw in the mid-note yesterday, well, an average program uh, lives far longer than, uh, than a developer in his or her job. So you cannot rely on uh, that others will, uh, will, will not do something nasty in, uh, <laughs> with, uh, with such uh, classes. So, yeah, well, we shouldn't delete the strongly typed container with a pointer to the vector. And in fact, why would you do that? I mean, you want to introduce the strong type. So why would you use that, uh, that vector uh, anyway? But uh, you will never know in, uh, you will never know, especially in uh, environments where people uh, come and go a lot. So yeah, it could be easily avoided. Because, uh, well, if we do this, we have a problem. We might have a problem, depending on the, how our uh, football squad is uh, implemented. 
and uh, well, you just shouldn't use the vector, but uh, well, you could uh, add even an additional layer, but it doesn't really solve the problem because uh, now instead of uh, inheriting from a from a vector, well, there I used uh, integers. That's uh, it's just a mistake there. So you could in, you could create a squad and uh, it could have a virtual destructor, and then you could uh, inherit from the squad. So you introduce the football squad, but uh, still nothing. Uh, prevents you to to do something problematic uh, here you just add one, you just added one uh, one more one more layer it's uh, less probable that you will do something bad but uh, well you cannot remove the probability completely Oops, that's the wrong direction that i uh, took but there is another question here not just the undefined behavior and uh, the possibility of polymorphic usage and there is also another uh, design choice. So uh, if you think about uh, the design of uh, the standard template library, it was designed on intention in a way that uh, some ideas are completely separated. The containers, the algorithms, the function objects like uh, uh, lesser, greater, uh, the iterators, they, they are separated. And uh, there is a uh, fair chance that uh, you will add some algorithms uh, to to your uh, strong uh, strong type, which inherits from the STL, and with that, well, you start mixing these separated concepts, and you break the design choices of uh, of the STL. Now the question is, does it matter? Is that a problem? Do you think it's a problem? Well, yeah, I see not really convinced faces. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem at all. Because, uh, well, maybe some of you is uh, developing for the whole community. It's never, definitely not the case for, uh, for me. And uh, it's not the case for uh, most of us. Most of us work on very specific problems, very specific applications. And the sad truth is that uh, most of our code, even when it could be reused, it's not reused. It's not even reused within the same company, within the same project. And, uh, well, I uh, don't want to encourage anyone to do copy-paste development, but uh, I think you all know what, uh, what, uh, what I mean. So it's, uh, this is not really a problem, at least uh, in my opinion. Because we should worry about uh, generic design problems if we write something generic. But in most cases, we don't. And we should focus on what uh, really matters. And, uh, well, only generic solutions need generic designs. That's, uh, that's something that uh, I think uh, yesterday we talked uh, a lot about and otherwise we should focus on keeping our code uh, as readable as usable as uh, as possible as clean as possible and uh, just make our apis a bit easier to use and uh, harder to to misuse so after all inheriting from stl container publicly is that a good idea well we saw it's very easy to implement. It uh, gives us the type safety that uh, we were looking for and something that uh, the, the aliases uh, did not give. But we cannot use uh, uh, that uh, kind of polymorphism. And uh, we really have to pay attention on how we extend our classes. So this is uh, probably a an easy and good enough solution when you want to use strong typing and you just want to, to let's say, quickly model something. But uh, in case you are working for a bigger uh, application in a, in a, let's say, in a corporation where uh, uh, people come and go a lot, don't do that. If you are delivering a library used by others, definitely don't do that because so you can't, well, you know, if uh, you give the possibility for something, then uh, you can be almost sure that someone will use that possibility and probably will misuse 
<laughs> that uh, that possibility. So I I would say it's dangerous for uh, for libraries and uh, and big applications. And by big, I don't necessarily mean the size of code, but the number of developers as well who who touch uh, the the code. So that's yes. Yeah, so the, the question was that uh, when we inherit publicly from, uh, from let's say, the standard vector, you will inherit uh, the different operators, and uh, they uh, might be uh, misused uh, if, if you have two types uh, inheriting from, uh, from the same uh, base container. And yeah, uh, actually, that's... Um, Partly something that we are going to, to discuss in the in the coming slides that uh, when you inherit uh, publicly, you inherit just everything, and uh, you give the users uh, a vast uh, list of uh, well a very huge API to use. But that's often not something you want. You want to really uh, to to limit what uh, they can use and how they can use it. And if you use the coming to techniques then uh, you kind of uh, uh, limit, uh, limit this problem. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for, uh, for the remark. So should we use private inheritance? First, let's discuss about what private inheritance is, because uh, if you look into most of the code bases, it's not going to be used, and you will find uh, many people who, don't who are not really familiar with this concept, because, uh, well, it's not something we use a lot, and it's not something we should use a lot. We'll, we'll see that. So, uh, with the private inheritance, the access specifier of the inheritance doesn't affect the inheritance of the implementation, but uh, the, imp well, the implementation is always inherited based on the function's access level. The inheritance's access specifier only affects the accessibility of uh, the class interface. So, in other words, Private inheritance is uh, not really inheritance. It's more like composition. It represents, uh, has a relationship, not an is a relationship. And uh, it's, it's basically just, uh, just another uh, way to express composition. But should we use that other way? Well, the core guideline says that uh, whenever you can, use a composition and use private inheritance only only when you really have to. And, um, well, there is an example behind that link uh, from the core uh, guidelines. I don't really find it uh, very readable, but I couldn't come up with a better use case myself either because it's uh, not, so, not so frequent that you really have to use private inheritance. So there's a good reason for, for this. But let's see when you have to use it. So there are two parts of this. The derived class has to call a non-virtual function of the base. And uh, that base has to invoke usually a pure virtual function of, uh, of the derived. So just because we, were mentioned, uh, we mentioned cars and we said that this is more like a composition, than, uh, than an inheritance, there is something related to cars, or at least parts of the cars. So we have uh, that uh, engine class, we have, uh, we have a non-virtual uh, invoke accelerate, and uh, it will call the notify power user, uh, which you see is, uh, is pure virtual, and in our class off-road, that obviously it has an engine, that off-road car. Well, there in Accelerate, you call Invoke Accelerate from the base, and then it will call the Notify Power user, which is implemented in a, in a certain way. I guess you don't find this uh, example very, very readable. Yeah, uh, there is <laughs> rarely a case when you have to use uh, private inheritance, but let's see 
how would it uh, be useful for us in uh, with uh, with uh, strongly typed containers. So the thing is now you have to type quite a lot to expose the the API that uh, that you want or uh, to implement uh, or to to directly implement the the functions that uh, that you want because uh, well uh, with private inheritance yeah the the API itself, uh, the accessibility of it is not uh, not inherited, so you have to you have to expose it yourself. It's still simple. You cannot say it's complex to to implement, but there's a lot of manual work to do. But you don't have a problem anymore with uh, polymorphism. It's not a problem that there is no virtual destructor. So. Here you see that uh, I, I'm often hesitating whether I should keep uh, this uh, this next slide, but uh, uh, when I presented this to my colleagues, they said, "Yeah, keep it because uh, not uh, everyone was uh, was aware that uh, there is basically two ways that we could uh, expose, for example, the the empty function of uh, of the vector." One way is that, uh, well, we type a lot and uh, we just, uh, let's say, forward the function call to, to, the, to the base classes implementation, but uh, we can also just uh, use the, the using uh, keyword there and we say that, well, we want to use uh, uh, the, the vector constructors, we want to use the, the pushback functions and uh, that's uh, that's just a leaner way to to expose the underlying API, and uh, it's not just leaner, but it's more uh, let's say future proof because in case uh, well, it's not v very probable with vector, but uh, in many other cases it, uh, it 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 can happen that the API of the base class, the the number of parameters of the base class function will change, and then. You don't have to update uh, your derived classes uh, to do the forwarding uh, in a in a correct way, but uh, with with using you just uh, use all the the overloads there, and uh, in in case there is a change, there you have nothing to do, so it's easier to maintain like this. So considering all what we saw, is private inheritance a good idea? Well, we have no problem anymore with the missing constructor. And uh, we, we can use the using. And with that, we don't have to type that much. We still have to type, but not that much. And we'll end up with a linear API. Because, uh, because we have to type, well, we won't uh, just uh, expose everything. We will expose what... Uh, we think that the users of the class should uh, should use. At uh, the same time, well, we still have to type quite a bit, and uh, we rely on a not widely used concept. We rely on private inheritance, which uh, might not be that understandable for uh, for everyone who is touching the code base. So let's go to our um, final option: composition final before we touch the open source solutions. So what's this about? What's this composition about? We want to build something complex out of uh, simple blocks. And uh, we want to show that uh, we have some members that are part of uh, the whole concept. And uh, it truly expresses, it, uh, it very easily expresses, it has a relationship, I would say, much better than, uh, than private uh, inheritance. But we'll have to type uh, quite some, because here we cannot even use the, the using anymore, because uh, there is nothing to use from, uh, from a base class, because, well, we don't have uh, a base class. We have to implement uh, by hand uh, everything. Mm, is it difficult? Probably not, but it's easy to make some uh, some errors, and, uh, and at the end, it's a bit cumbersome to to implement. So, yeah, as I mentioned, no no using of using. But at least 
it's very readable. It's uh, self-evident what uh, what we do. That we don't use any language tricks, let's say. And uh, with the lots of typing, I'm sure that uh, you will end up with uh, with an API that uh, you intended to, because uh, while well, you write it uh, yourself, you really want to uh, expose something uh, that uh, that you didn't want to. Because well, let's face it: when with private inheritance with the using keyword, you might start uh, just uh, you know. Uh, copy pasting and uh, replacing certain methods. You might even have a template somewhere, or uh, I don't mean the C++ template, but just a file where <laughs> you do this, or you even have a small Python script doing this. Well, it's uh, it's less of a problem with uh, with composition, uh, but uh, you have to let's say forward whatever you have to. But uh, you might not just forward; you might add some uh, some. Um, uh, custom implementation there, and uh, at the end you will end up, I think, with a smaller, leaner uh, API with an API that you intended to to have. So I think this is good both for uh, internal projects and uh, well, I said it might be problematic for libs, but it depends on like uh, what you expose at the end because uh, you have a strong, uh, strongly typed container, and uh, you really have to think about what uh, the users of your library want to do with your uh, your strong types. You might really have to implement a lot of things. You might have to expose a lot of things. Uh, it requires some thinking and, uh, and working. And uh, you also have to think about uh, like uh, iterators that you might haven't uh, to think about uh, before. You have to expose them one uh, one by one, but actually you you had to do it with you had to do it with uh, private uh, inheritance too. But uh, if if you think a bit, okay, you can do it in a way that doesn't require so much uh, so much work afterwards for uh, for your users. Even if you change the uh, even if you change the underlying container, uh, they won't have to do any code change. It's just uh, recompile. But it's not. I don't really think it's uh, it's a big uh, deal. Uh, anymore. So shall we use composition? Well, intellectually, I think it's uh, it's a very simple solution. Uh, definitely simpler than uh, the private inheritance. You have access to a fully customized uh, API. And uh, obviously, you have no problems with, uh, with the virtual. So, so far, the balance is quite uh, positive. You have to type uh, quite a lot. That's uh, that's the price you you pay. So, which way should we take? Well, there's no silver bullet here. There is no uh, ultimate answer. Uh, if you only wanted good names, you might consider simply just uh, aliasing because it's a cheap way uh, forward, and it might be the first step for uh, for a better domain model. Uh, if you just uh, prototype something or you have a small project, uh, probably you could publicly inherit from uh, from the STL, but you have to keep in mind that uh, it uh, it can be dangerous. You might uh, go towards some undefined behavior. For big projects, for public libraries, I wouldn't do that. And... Uh, then you go even either with private inheritance or with composition. But as we saw, uh, the core guidelines, it uh, discourages us from, uh, from using uh, private inheritance. So we should prefer the composition because uh, it gives us uh, more flexibility and it's easier to do it uh, correctly. And for most, it will be more understandable. So I would go with uh, with composition at the end. So are there any open source solutions? As uh, I mentioned, yeah, there are. Obviously, there are. We are going to see four open source solutions quickly. Um, they are here. You see that uh, I skipped the line between type safe and the others name type, strong type, strong type dev, because uh, there is a bit of uh, difference between type safe and uh, and the other three. 
but essentially they are quite similar. They are all some header role libraries, and they are all well documented. That's uh, that, that was really a pleasure to to read about them because uh, well, they have good documentation. They are very similar and easy to use, and one of them uh, offers uh, I think a bit more customization than uh, the others, but you have to type a bit more. So. When I first uh, asked my colleagues to to come and uh, and attend my, uh, my my talk to to practice a bit, they said, "Okay, you showed all these. Why don't you show? Why didn't you show us Boost Strong Type Def?" Well, one thing is that I didn't know about it. The other is that I understood later why I didn't know about it because uh, I, I started to dig up some uh, some information. And it turns out that, uh, well, we have boost strong type def, but it's not a first class boost object. It was not really intended to, let's say, to publicly use, publicly released. It's part of uh, the serialization library. It helped the implementer. It helped only the implementer to implement parts of, uh, of his uh, library. And uh, he only implemented uh, some some parts of, uh, let's say, a strong type, and it doesn't always meet some of our essential expectations from a strong type. And, uh, well, there the documentation is. Uh, I say it's very scarce, uh, and uh, with that probably I already exaggerated a bit. But uh, you see here that uh, we use some macros, and we create a timer ID, a process ID, and uh, with this example at the end, uh, we could we could uh, uh, compare a timer ID with a process ID, and uh, our example says it's it's equal, and they can even uh, be summed up. So something that uh, that uh, you you mentioned earlier that uh, we might run into into these issues. So this is not something we would like to to go with. So let's see type safe by uh, by Jonathan Miller, and uh, here, well. This is the only one which requires a bit of overhead compared to the others because uh, you have to create your own uh, uh, strong type by hand. You have to declare this uh, struct or class squad. And uh, that's not something you have to do with the others. But uh, it, uh, it has its own uh, advantage because of, because of the same reason we're going to see. So this uses uh, the CRTP, the curiously recurring uh, template pattern. So you see squad here, and you see that squad is passed uh, to uh, to this base uh, class template. And there are many ba uh, building blocks available. Like uh, you can make uh, it uh, easily quality comparable. You don't have to implement it uh, by uh, by hand. You have many of these building blocks and. Uh, if you want to access the underlying type, well, you either do a static cast or you can uh, just call get that you're going to see on the next uh, slide here when you call uh, uh, get with, uh, with our squad. And uh, so what, what you see here is that uh, it offers a flexible API because we create our own, uh, own struct here. Uh, at the end, you can add uh, whatever uh, you you want to do. You can add your own getter, for example, if uh, you feel that it's uh, it's better. But obviously, there are many more possibilities to that. But I didn't want to to go that deep there. But you have to, at the end, you have to type a bit more than uh, with the others. That's that's the price you pay for for flexibility. So if we check name type by uh, by Jonathan Bokara. You will see that uh, here we don't create manually your own uh, classes. We're just uh, aliasing these uh, these templates, and uh, we just simply use template arguments there. And uh, again, you have many building blocks available to make it comparable to to whatever uh, you'd, you would like to do. And what uh, I I liked here is that uh, it's uh, it's easy to introduce to to your code base. Okay, it's uh, probably has the best uh, documentation overall 
mostly because of the Fluent CPP blog, which uh, uh, discussed uh, named type quite uh, quite a lot. But uh, and and this negative point is uh, true for all the three libraries. They don't really offer a very sophisticated uh, API because. Uh, you don't uh, create your your own class uh, like you did with uh, with the previous library. So the next one is uh, is strong type by Bjorn Faller, uh, who is here with us uh, today. Thanks for uh, coming. And uh, you said I think that it's inspired by type safe. Uh, I found it that it more resembles to named type, at least how you you use it. It's uh, it's it's yeah it's very similar. Uh, you have uh, a bit more miscellaneous functions. You have uh, the, the way you can uh, get the underlying type. You the way you can swap. It's a bit. Uh, uh, I think it offers a bit more uh, functionality than uh, than the previous one. That uh, was uh, my my feeling there. And again, there are some good extra additions in uh, in this library. And uh, probably, well, personally, I found this one the most readable among the four uh, four libraries that I checked because of the names that uh, were chosen here. Uh, and again, I have the very same negative point that before. Well, the API is not uh, very sophisticated because of the already explained uh, uh, reasons. Last but not least, we have strong type type def by Anthony Williams. It resembles to the previous two name type and uh, and strong type, and uh, it has a really extensive documentation, especially uh, if you think about okay how you write equality comparable here and uh, with all these properties that you can add with uh, with the CRTP. That is very well, uh, very extensively documented. So that's that's one of its uh, strong points of uh, strong type def that uh, it has well documented properties. Uh, I found that okay, it has the same issue as uh, as the others. Uh, well, I wouldn't even call them an issue. It's a, it's a decision. It's a design decision, and a bit, it, this is a bit more uh, verbose. It's a bit verbose to my style. If you check like okay, JSS strong type def properties equality comparable. That's something uh, very long, but again, this is not uh, like uh, like a big issue. But uh, you have very small differences between these uh, these libraries. So if you think about okay, but uh, what about the the performance? Well, I didn't do an extensive performance testing here. I was just uh, interested in some basic properties. So basically, I did uh, the same with uh, with everything. I just uh, tried to do some some pushback. On the underlying type and uh, and benchmark it, and you see that uh, compared to the standard uh, vector, all the other four they had a bit of an overhead, about uh, maybe ten percent. But uh, it might be due to maybe a misuse on my side. I haven't gone into a deep analysis. Something we discussed with uh, with Bjorn that uh, we might check this uh, after the the conference from where this uh, this might come from. This might be well it depends on your use case if this is uh, relevant or not it might be it might not be but uh, what is evident that if you want to go with any of these libraries you don't really have to consider the the performance differences between those because uh, there is essentially no performance difference uh, between uh, between them which is something uh, I would say we kind of uh, expected when we saw how uh, similarly we can uh, we can use them. So how do we choose? Well, if you want a customized API, you will go with uh, TypeSafe. If um, you want the simplicity, then uh, well, you check the licenses. It's uh, either MIT or uh, or BSL. I'm not. Uh, well, I'm not a. Uh, Master of these licenses, but what uh, my uh, colleagues told me who who deal with licenses that uh, no, it's not uh, any of uh, you. We, you could take any of them; it's not an issue. Then it comes down a bit of uh, a bit to your personal preferences. Now, 
overall, what solution should we choose? Should we pick an open source solution? Should we implement our own strong types? Well, license-wise, we don't have a problem. But when I discussed, uh, so I work in a big corporation, I think we are around uh, 10,000 people. And when I discussed with, uh, with the team who is responsible for introducing um, uh, open source libraries, they said there is no way that I would accept any of these. Because, uh, well, these uh, libraries, they don't have a premium support. And uh, more importantly, they are all like one-man projects. You can um, abandon it uh, any time. And of course, it's possible to fork it. But uh, let's say you have 100 teams using it. Who will be the one who will maintain it? It's usually not. Uh, that's, that's a risk that uh, they barely want to, to take in, um, in corporations, I would say. So it, it depends on your, uh, your company, let's say, if uh, this would be allowed to use. Well, if not, then, uh, then we saw how to choose among uh, the four uh, other options. Uh, most probably you will have to go then with your own implementation and most probably you will end up uh, with uh, with composition. So it's time to conclude. Uh, I would encourage all of you to use strong typing. Use strong typing to increase uh, your type safety, to increase the readability and reduce the chance to misuse your own uh, APIs and uh, to reduce the chance that others misuse your APIs. And uh, also introduce these strong types to add more meaning to your code, to through the type names directly. And uh, if you are not uh, comfortable with strong typing, if you have never used with strong typing and you're wondering how to use it, well, I would say that you can take uh, code kata uh, you can take a code exercise and just play around first. Maybe pull in your uh, your colleagues, organize a coding dojo, spend an hour uh, pair programming and uh, try to experiment. If you are looking for uh, uh, for uh, code cutters that are uh, good for uh, using uh, strongly typed containers, then uh, I encourage you to use uh, either bowling or game of life or uh, maybe poker hands. They need containers, so they are good for strongly typed containers. And then just uh, spread the information among your colleagues and try uh, to introduce these concepts to your, uh, to your production uh, code base. And, uh, and that's it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask now or, uh, or later.